Our top story today, another day, another suspension for a Labour Party candidate. This is Graham Jones, who's been given the boot now after a recording emerged of him making comments about Israel, including that Brits who went to fight for the IDF should be locked up. We're talk now, uh, joined even by Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Cardwell, and assistant US opinion editor and far more talented for the Daily Telegraph, Poppy Coburn. <laughs> Good morning, one and all. Good morning. Hello. Ha happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Any cards yet, Poppy? Not yet, but I'm expecting a few when I get Pete, them. Pete, any? I have been alerted by someone in the office that there's a package for me upstairs not to be opened until today. So well, I'm oh, going well, up immediately well, after this to find Your out mother's it such a kind <laughs> soul. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mine's dead. Anyway, Peter, this story that's been developing over over the week, you know, Parliament's in yes. recess, but actually, you know, Parliament is the Massive. big the big story and what's going to happen in this by election. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who's waking up this morning, just tell us how yesterday developed because now a second suspension. This is just an absolute nightmare for the Labour Party because what's emerging is that there was a meeting last year with now two parliamentary candidates, one after Ali for Rochdale then Graham Jones, who spoke at the same meeting and said anti-Semitic things. Now, the question is, well, we know roughly what they said. We have a recording of it. That's in the public domain. But at the same time, the question is, what about all the people at the meeting sitting there listening to this? Why, didn't, why wasn't this challenged? So Keir Starmer said he wanted to rip the poison of anti-Semitism out of the Labour Party. We've got to give him credit for some of the stuff he's done over the last four years. He has, tried, he has changed the party fundamentally uh, since the Jeremy Corbyn days where anti-Semitism flourished. But we have now have two parliamentary candidates, one person who's been an MP, and there are other allegations flying around today, including the Daily Telegraph, about other members, including some members of his shadow cabinet, who are alleged to have made anti-Semitic remarks or done anti-Semitic things. So this is a really, really serious problem for Keir Starmer. The Rochdale by-election is the one where Afsar Ali, the candidate, is in, uh, will be up for election. He's now uh, had his support from Labour withdrawn. He's no longer their candidate. If he wins, he would sit as an independent, wouldn't have the Labour whip. That's on the 29th of February. But there are two other by-elections this week, Wellingborough and Kingswood. So really, for the Labour Party, this couldn't get any worse. Um, Poppy, um, I'm sat in a meeting earlier, and I want to I talk about this in detail. Um, and people were talking about anti-Semitism. We live in a world now where, <clears throat> quite rightly, people talk about racism, they talk about all sorts of things. Anti-Semitism is rife. Um, as are Ali's comments were anti-Semitic. That is absolutely factual and have led to, as Peter said, the Labour Party, they don't want anything to do with him. It's a bizarre situation. Graham Jones said, I <clears throat> hate Israel. I, um, people who work or go and fight for IDF should be locked up. Is it all under the same banner? Because a lot of people will say, oh, it's different. My opinion would be that this is actually uncovering a, a strong anti-Israeli feeling in this country. When people jump up and down and they say, oh, that's racist, let's talk about the Jewish race who have faced this sort of thing for a long time. And I think this is shining a light on something that needs dealing with. Well, I think the opinions that Graham Jones did articulate at that meeting are unfortunately very common within the Labour Party. I think Keir Starmer's kind of stitched himself up here with this complete zero tolerance. You, sorry, when you say within the Labour Party, you're talking about uh, elected representatives, elected people who representative are members of the party. Members, uh, the way that Keir Starmer has handled um, the Israel-Palestine crisis since October 7th has made a lot of Labour Party activists extremely angry. And that really came across in the language that is actually used. I mean, he says he effing hates, uh, it's effing Israel. Everyone across the world is just going, oh, Israel's at it again. Um, and I, and can, I have people, can... and I, <clears throat> listen, John and I, we, we, we have discussions, but some people would say that's not anti Semitic. Can you imagine saying that word effing about um, uh, a country full of Muslim people or black people? You'd be told you were a racist. My argument is that is anti Semitic in each and every context. Well, and, and of course, Keir Starmer, you know, he has to be consistent in how he sure. responds to this. <clears throat> Kate Osmore has the whip removed from her for comments she yeah. makes about Gaza. Um, I think uh, another Labour Party activist has the whip removed for um, seeing from the river to the sea. He has to be consistent here. He can't pick and choose. Well, well Pop, Poppy's absolutely right. Sorry to interrupt you, but she's absolutely right. This is uh, this has been the handling of this has been a mess yeah. because originally they said, right, he's apologised. After Ali, he's apologised. We're right. We're backing him. They sent out Pat McFadden, the national election coordinator mm. for Labour, a very very senior <clears throat> right hand man of Keir Starmer. They sent out Lisa. Lisa Nandy was campaigning yeah. with this guy the other day. So for some people, if they make racist remarks, they're immediately cancelled and probably yeah. should be in, in many cases. 
but Afsar Ali was given a second chance. Then more information and more audio came out of that meeting. Graham Jones at the same meeting. And we're in a situation but where... But then what about Jones Galloway? Been, is... Graham Jones is then suspended. Yes. So at this point... Immediately the... after, after the after, so after Ali the, uh, the biggest criticism is that initially when those first comments came up, Labour said, we support the candidate and then changed their mind. That's yes. the mishandling of it. Yes. But the, the rest, you think... When new allegations coming up, mm. presumably, um, you know, the rule book's kind of written, we hear something like that, <clears> therefore we, th we withdraw our support Although, immediately. as Poppy correctly points out, there have been people previously who have made sort of one remark or said something like... I well, mean, I mean uh, Kate Osmore, for example, said that, said that they, on Holocaust Memorial Day made uh, horrible comments about Israel. So uh, there's an inconsistency here in terms of how well, Labour have dealt with This is a really interesting point, actually, yeah. uh, Poppy, inconsistency. So I was reading something yesterday. Let's go back to the beginning of what happened and is happening in Gaza. I mean, I have to say that Starmer was quicker out of the blocks than Sunak and received quite a lot of criticism from his own party. But I was reading something yesterday that said, you know, people that called for a ceasefire early on, like Jess Phillips, were thrown off the front bench straight away. He's now calling for a ceasefire, Keir Starmer. So if there isn't consistency in how you deal with certain individuals within your party, are we not absolutely right to be sitting here and discussing and saying... By the way, pal, there's a light on your head. You want to be the next Prime Minister. Welcome to the reality of the job, because it's hard, well, isn't it's it? It's flip-flop, flip-flop. Yeah. He had the £28 billion pound green investment deal, yeah. which gets dropped and then picked up again and then seemingly dropped. He has his chief of staff, Sue Gray, who's incredibly now popular within the party because she's holding all these inquiries about leaking. You know, he's in a situation where he can't actually get the people who are supposed to be supporting him on his shadow bench on side. He cannot convince them on this Israeli issue, and this is going to cause problems for him time and time again. Do you think again. it makes any difference to the bigger picture? Sorry, quickly. <sighs> no, I do not. But no. that's because the Tories are losing the election and Labour isn't winning it. I, I, I agree with Poppy. I still think Labour will win all three of these by-elections. Yeah. So we've got two by-elections to come uh, this week, which yes. we're reporting on here, but can we just talk about that one in Rochdale, <clears> because um, there are, we must go through all the candidates. Yes, indeed, I have the list, the list here. Afsar Ali, as, or as, as are Ali, as we mentioned uh, previously, he's the Labour candidate. Or, well, he's on the ballot he's as a Labour candidate. candidate. He's an independent, he's right? An, he's on the ballot as a Labour candidate, but he's, he's an independent. Uh, Mark Coleman is independent. Simon Danchuk for Reform UK. Ian Donaldson is a Liberal Democrat. Paul Ellison for the Conservatives. George Galloway for the Workers' Party of Britain. Michael Harreth is an independent. William Harreth is independent as well. Guy Alton from the Green Party. Raven Rudent Subortna from the o official Monster Raving Looney Party. And David Tully is independent. Um, can I put this to Poppy, because he'll just laugh at me. Is it ironic that the official Monster Raving Looney Party's candidate is called Raving Subortna? It's, 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 Normative it's, determinism, isn't it? You I don't know, know what that means. You're far more intelligent Well, well so your, your name determines your path in life. I mean, you kind of have only had one option. And I like, find like them... Like Mr Banks and Mary Poppins. <laughs> His name was Mr Banks and he worked in a bank. So that's nominative determinism. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to do you later. That didn't sound right. Can I just <laughs> ask you on a serious note, as our Ali, again, you look at that, you go Rochdale Bilech and Labour Party, they're in a terrible pickle because the man has got Labour Party written. And inside that constituency, irrespective of the selection mm. process, and I'm not wanting to cause any more controversy than usual, but somebody once did say, as I said yesterday, never overestimate the intelligence of people who vote, a lot of them. They're going to go Labour Party and tick. Yeah. Or are they going to stay at home? I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker, I'll be honest with you. You I think th he'll still win? I actually think it will make him more popular, unfortunately. I, I'm not sure that... Um, I think some of these comments that Azar Ali made were slightly cynical. From what I've heard, where, I mean, Charles Moore <clears> wrote in his column yesterday in my paper, um, that he knew him, he thought him to be quite a, you know, a respectable man, he's to the right of the Labour Party. He thinks that the comments were cynical in nature. He was playing up anti-Israel sentiment in the constituency. Which and, has uh, a heavy Muslim, let's be perfectly straight yes, and honest uh, about uh, that. Yes, and I think this is, I mean, Labour is facing a pretty major problem with that. I don't think it's going to be enough to sway the by-election in this instance. Unfortunately, it might give George Galloway a better way of getting in, but, you know, heaven forbid he actually does win that seat. Um, I think we do have to be slightly honest here and say that, unfortunately, these comments, which are anti-Semitic, are probably not going to be a deal-breaker for a significant portion of the voters there. Just and then that is, the, that is the wider context. Um, can we move on to another story? Can I just story? make a really, really brief point? Just want to make, sorry to interrupt you, Rosie. Running story. it all today, any just card while well on Valentine's Day. Just want to make really clear that we cannot... Not that Poppy was doing this at all, but not all Muslims vote Labour. The, the, 
uh, statistics would show not. that 60 to 65 percent of people vote vote. Uh, but it's interesting what she says about the cynicism yes. because people are saying, was he playing to a potential audience? I, I, I worry and about... I have to say that one of the greatest things about this TV network, and I've said it to you before, is that we can actually say that without somebody saying you're being outrageous. I, I worry about the other people setting up the meeting. Sorry, Rosie. Yeah, yeah sure. no, understood. Um, right, another big uh, election battleground, of course, has been Rwanda. Now, we're hearing uh. about some more of the strategies uh, that the Home Office wants to deploy uh, to try and dissuade people from getting into small boats. The latest is that TikTok stars are going to be paid uh, to create content to warn people not to make the journey. Waste of money, Peter, or, or maybe a savvy strategy? If this doesn't stop the boats, I don't know what will, <laughs> Rosie. Uh, no. Vote Cardwell! <laughs> we'll pay TikTokers to stop the migrants. TikTok influencers in countries where there are a high level of people coming across, who, who eventually come across the channel, will be paid up to £5,000 to try to t tell people not to come across the channel in boats. It's an idea. Will it be? Is it a bad idea? It's probably not terrible. Is it going to stop the boats? No, is, is my there, strong prediction. Is there a chance that this end up, people end up taking the mickey of it? We've kind of got other TikTokers who might create similar spoof content and it becomes a bit of a kind of a, a joke? Yes. Yeah, Poppy, what do you wait, think? Wait, I mean, wait, but, I mean ultimately, Jeremy, if you want them to have a deterrent, maybe you want them to try anything that might stop Rosie, people trying the to... with their... respect, we're supposed to be the fifth most successful cr country in the world. And after 13 years of rubbish, right, <laughs> genuinely, and a home office that isn't fit for purpose, the best these idiots could come up with is to pay some foreign TikTok influences. No, I, it's, a, Jeremy, it's a joke, I Rosie. Un... We look ridiculous. I oh, that's what you we, really think, Jeremy. I think that's like, this is not the best they can come up with. The best it's they can come rubbish, up with man. is the Rwanda policy, which they can't actually action. Why do they spend I mean, 100 grand on creating a Processing an, system. An extra oh my thing. God. At least the TikTok is cheap. I mean, it's up to five thousand pounds. It's not. It's not like they're paying lots Pops, of money for it. No, no, I do not believe that this is going to work. I believe this is the sign of a government that is getting desperate here. I think, unfortunately, yes. the deterrence aspect, which is constantly talked about by the government, we need to deter the people smugglers. We need to deter people coming on the boats. They are not being deterred by people with guns at the Libyan border. They are not going to be deterred by a man dancing on TikTok. Come on, let's be real. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Thank you so much. Probably from The Telegraph, Peter Carbwell. Um, both are you back really next, hour? Yes. <laughs> Can't you just hang around? You're great. You put him in his place as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Poppy and Pete, the two Ps. Uh, thank you both so much.